G'day and welcome back for more Survival Impossible. And I've got some big plans for today. My hope is to get this little rickshaw miner up to a stage where I've got an ore detector on it and it's relatively easy for me to drive around such that I can take it to up the hill a bit and see if I can find some cobalt and a few other bits and pieces and hopefully be able to bring some back and refine it to allow us to get well, to allow us to get ready to leave this place, because I don't want to hang around where I am. I, much as this view is interesting, it's not as good as I suspect I'll be able to get if I move further up the hill. So I want to go where it's pretty. The first thing I want to do is something that was suggested to me, which was to add a little bit of protection to this battery and hopefully prevent it from getting destroyed when I flick the drill up and smack it into the ground. So. In aid of that, I'm going to produce a few steel plate, and you can see I've actually got a small amount of resources, something that should last me a little while, thanks to the little goofy miner here, that I still have not decided on a name of. I think what I'm going to use is bl a blast door blocks. I was almost tempted to put one by one suspension wheels down the side here, so that I have them on zero friction at the back and that'll allow me to kind of skate around on them with my drill up in the air. Uh, but they're a little more expensive. <laughs> so I decided against that. And what instead I'm going to do is use a blast door corner. One here, I th think. I think that would be best. I'm trying to decide whether going further back is going to be a problem. I think it will be. So what I want to avoid with placing these on here is preventing myself from being able to lift this drill high enough. The more I add under this battery, the more I add behind it, the less lift angle I get. And I need that lift angle to prevent me from just basically drilling straight down, or ultimately drilling straight down. So I'm hopeful that if I add a couple of blast door blocks here and here, my angle will still be okay. So I was thinking something like that, and then if I want to do some decorative stuff later, I can do something like... Oh, this is a lot harder to do without a jetpack, get into these spots. Something like... Eh, a blast door. Oh, this wheel's in the way. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to get creative here. There we go. Uh, something like a blast door block along there and then one further just to here so then there's a line of three of them underneath it'll all look quite neat in fact i do have a little bit of resources i might do that except i'm going to use a corner here the reason for that is the way i accidentally did these clips if i had all the clips facing down i would have used the uh edges a pair of edges but this way i'll have um the clip's all in three different directions, which I think will look better. Plus, this is a little bit of extra safety for me, having it all the way underneath. Oh, they're five each. Yikes. I had underestimated their expense. But, given that they may prevent this battery from exploding, I think they're worth it. Since I've started today off with doing something vaguely with aesthetics in mind, what I'm also going to do is paint this thing. You might have noticed in the thumbnail I had this thing painted red. I had done that purely for the thumbnail. I wanted the thumbnail to have a little bit more interest to it than just straight up grey. Because, you know, grey is boring for a thumbnail. Which is, unfortunately, that's my, been my suit colour for so long that I don't think I can change it. I think I will go with... Let's try Rusty. Interesting. I may have to change up the cockpit because it looks a bit rougher than the other ones and the colour's a bit more muted. So I might have to individualise the colour for blocks to try and make it all match, but I'm alright with that for now. And then we'll go with some white battered for the wheels. I suppose I could go white battered for here see how that looks. Yeah, I think that might look better in Rusty. 
So the next thing I wanted to talk about with this was the gyroscopes. Last time I didn't really talk about what I'd done. I kind of ran out of time in the edit to keep in the bit that I'd talked about it and I hadn't really talked about it very clearly anyway. So I was like, eh, I'll just talk about it next time. What I've done is set up one of these gyroscopes and this one's the blue one to override. What that means is it's trying to do everything it can to stop this vehicle from changing its orientation. It doesn't want to roll. It doesn't, it, it just doesn't want to let it move. Whereas this one is the one that I control directly with my mouse. And if we hop in, you can see that gyroscope two, there's nothing on the override, but gyroscope one has this override set with zero pitch, yaw and roll. That was roughly okay for what I needed for the drill being empty. But once the drill's full, there's a lot more weight pulling it forward. So I need a slightly different strength or a slightly different adjustment for the I think it ends up being your for some reason I've never quite spent oh, okay I've never quite spent enough time with the gyroscopes to figure out why they choose a certain orientation for the grid but I think it's based off the grid origin not the cockpit which is unfortunate because if it was set off the cockpit you'd easily be able to know which way was pitch your and roll in every circumstance but what I'm thinking of doing is having these gyroscopes. So gyroscope one will be toggle override on and off and gyroscope two will have the same. Gyroscope one will be set up for the empty drill state. Gyroscope two will be set up for the full drill state. So as soon as the drill's full, I switch the override from one gyroscope to the other and that should make it nicely balanced. And the reason I don't want to use the increase your and decrease your or whichever one of these it ends up being is that the the amount of change you get with each of those is just too large the change isn't granular granular enough to really get things level so I think this might work out or at least I'd like to try it and something you may have just noticed when I was moving this around is that this thing is crazy sensitive so I'm actually going to reduce the power down to half. On reload, for some reason that often seems to happen, this thing became, the gyroscopes became much, much more effective. And I think it would be very easy with the current setup for me to smack this hard enough just with turning that I will destroy most of this miner. So really don't want to do that. And now hopefully yeah, that's a little less twitchy. It's still super... It still is super twitchy, though. Maybe I will... Drop this to... 30%. And... If you notice, I just tilted forward, so I'm going to... Nope, that's going the wrong way, I think. Yeah, there we go. It was your... Thought it might have been. I'm going to put that to, say... There. That looks pretty even. So that's holding pretty steady and hopefully will be about right for what I need to be able to drive this thing around without too much hassle. There's always going to be a small adjustment needed. These systems like this, I've never managed to get them to be perfect. A few people suggested using some alignment scripts. The trouble with that is, if I use an alignment script, it doesn't exactly work when I want to mine and adjust the height. I'd have to turn off the script, turn on the gyro overrides, so I may as well just use the overrides as it is. I don't think I get much advantage out of using a script here. The next thing to talk about here is more counterweight balancing. So adding either some cargo at the rear here or adding a connector on the back of the battery, I don't think I'll do because that's going to end up dragging out too far and is almost certainly going to end up getting smacked on the ground when I try and drill up high enough that I don't drill straight down. And a few people suggested something that I think could be a bit of fun, which was using a collector and ejectors instead. Even though it's horribly inefficient, and it takes a lot of work. I think from an aesthetic perspective, this miner look would look a lot cooler if it has to recharge via a rotor attached somewhere, and if it dumps off stuff into a collector. One thing I was curious about though, is how expensive a collector is. It is substantially cheaper than a connector. That could make it a viable option. The unfortunate thing is, I'm going to have to place it up at a height like this and build a platform to drive onto it, 
so that I can actually dump onto it or have it set out here and build conveyors around which adds to the cost and probably brings it closer in line with what the connector would cost anyway but it's something I'm seriously considering I don't need to sort that out yet though what I do need is to have this detector ready by the time daylight comes I'm just thinking about cargo connections and other blocks that I might end up putting in here and I think that ore detector is in the space where I'm least likely to try and use it for something else. Um, ore detector, max range, and let's have you on my hotbar so I don't have you on until I'm ready. What I might do is place a couple of these conveyor blocks in one there. We've already got the one on this side and then I'm going to put a small cargo container going downward from that. I don't think I'm going to add anything else on that block since I'm going to be putting the ejectors at the front. So it should be a fairly safe place to put it and I think the amount of cargo space I get from them is so little as to be completely irrelevant but still. It may help to counterbalance things a little bit. And I'm trying to see what I can do to this miner before dawn because I'm not going to go driving around this place until we start getting some daylight. So I'll probably end up with a fair bit of resource collection time in, in between when I get moving and now. And then I could either add another small cargo container in the linking bit between or I could add another junction. I think I might just do go the cargo container. I'm so glad I started on a slope because it makes doing things like jumping up just then a lot simpler. There we go. So how pathetically small an amount of cargo do I get out of that? 125 litres. Yeah, that's not going to make a big difference. That's, you know, 375 litres for the three that I added, but... It's space that would otherwise have been taken up with an armour block or something else equally dead weight so I may as well put cargo containers wherever I can. Now for charging this, one of the things I have been racking my brain over is the fact that to get this into position to lock to something is quite challenging. Find control, and this is with my gyroscope set to quite weak, is difficult. So for me to hook up to something with a rotor is going to be nightmarishly difficult. I suspect. And therefore I am not really going to try to do it just yet. I've got plenty of power on this thing even when moving like, at full force I've still got a couple of hours so I don't think I'm going to run into problems too soon that I have to think about it and fix it up before I potentially move on. So if I'm going to go wandering off what I want to do... Ow! That really hurt! Holy moly! 52? Why do I get the feeling my first death is going to be from me just jumping off something that I've jumped off a million times and then I just happen to land awkwardly? So what I want to do with the time I've got before dawn is collect lots of resources, but also I'm going to make sure I've got plenty of food and water on board the miner. I know this is going to use up lots of cargo space, but I think it's important. I think we're going to spend the rest of the night now collecting ice and hopefully getting this battery on this thing. Where is it? There it is. This battery charged up. Because we've got fully depleted in two hours, so I think it is the sensible thing to do. And hope that I don't crash this thing while I'm doing it. Also, once I get this drill full, I can try and readjust the settings on everything. And this is what I mean by I need to be able to lift up the nose enough. Because if I can't, I then just start drilling downward too far. And I think I might need a bit more power on those gyroscopes. I don't think 0.3 is enough. Okay, maybe it's better not to have any override at all. Maybe it is better just to leave one on zero. I'm going to have to fiddle with this over time, I suspect. I think I'll gradually try a bunch of different ideas and see which one really works out the best because I'm not really sure at all at the moment, having not used a vehicle like this before, 
what's going to work out best. The closest vehicle I used to this was the twin stick shooter, the unicycle that I used over on uh, Shaq's Engineer Corps series. Uh, oh, jeez. Turning is slow right now. <laughs> I think all the added weight might have changed the handling characteristics a bit. While the drill's light, this is this really is a nice way to mine. If you... Oh! That would be kind of cool. I just thought of something. If you had a drill like this, and you had some sort of chute set up so that the boulders could roll down the hill, this plus an ejector setup that's just constantly rolling stuff down to where you've got a collector would be quite efficient. Because you'd be just able to produce the boulders at a prodigious rate and just not have to worry about the mass because when this is empty the control I've got is actually pretty good it's just when it gets full that it becomes a bit nightmarish one of the interesting suggestions that a few people had for me with this miner was to make another rickshaw styled vehicle and have it be the back half of a four wheel vehicle so I could have the other one be a bit of cargo space did I not park brake on? I didn't so the back half could be the cargo space and the thing that I use to lift the survival kit out of here and carry everything off to wherever I'm going. I'm tempted about that, but there's one thing that makes me hesitate, which is trying to get them connected in such a way that they line up properly so that you still have reasonable control is quite challenging. So if that ends up not being really that viable, what I'm going to do instead is turn this thing into a little trailer. I've seen a few of these sorts of things around where people have a big RV bus style thing and then a tiny little four wheel drive that they tow along on the back. And I kind of envisage this miner being like that little four wheel drive. It'll be towed along, it's a functional vehicle in its own right, but it's just much easier to drive the big thing and tow this than the other way around. So I'm very tempted to kind of do things that way once once I get to that point. So I'll have a little rotor part on this that I can attach to from the other vehicle and just tow this, saving me an extra trip of going back and forth from wherever I go to and allowing me to kind of move on in one step. Every single time I see sparks fly off the bottom there, I'm hoping that it's the blast door blocks, not the detector. <laughs> Might have to have a look at them and see if they've been damaged after this run. So I've done about five or six since I put them in there. Be nice to see that they aren't. I suspect they might be. It'd be reassuring if they're not really taking any damage from what I'm doing. Let's have a look. Ah, uh, yes. A couple of them have taken some damage. Well, I suppose that's reassuring in a way as well, because it means that I'm not damaging the battery and I would have been. So, yay, I guess. <laughs> Glad people reminded me that that was something I should probably do. Because it's possibly saved some battery damage already. It was at this point that I realised this night had been dragging on so long. I'd mined a bunch of ice, I'd mined a bunch of stone, I'd been getting power produced at this survival kit. And still the night kept going and going and going. So I started trying to think of ways to use up all that time that I had available to me. Ooh. That might be worth doing. So the stone processes so quickly that it's pretty much done by the time I get back into the cockpit here. Which means that I'm not really making use of the refinery's time when I'm... Like, most of the time. Like right now, the refiner is just sitting there idle and it's not really doing anything of value. But there are plenty of resources that take a lot longer to process. And there's one that's right nearby that I could do something with straight away. Even though it's nighttime, I could probably go and mine a little bit of it. And that's the magnesium. If I get some of that magnesium and leave it processing while I'm away, I'll hopefully accumulate enough of it that I can actually make some ammunition as soon as I need to because it has got to be relatively soon that I'll be able to have enemies come and attack me and I do not want to leave myself unprepared. So, I think 
rather than just continuing to mine stone all night as I wait for daylight, I'm going to go up to this boulder and I'm going to grab some magnesium and leave it processing in the refinery during the day as I go off and explore. Now this time I'm going to be needing to be fairly careful about not overloading myself. I'd much rather not... Well, I'm never in that much of a fuss if I waste some stone, but holy moly, slow down, slow down. Oh. Okay. What I was saying was I'm never in that much of a worry about wasting stone, but I don't want to waste that magnesium. I don't know where another source of it is, and that's a fairly small source of it, so I want to maximize my yield of the ore rather than maximizing the rather than minimizing the time I spend collecting it. So how slow is that magnesium? Yeah. Magnesium is slow. That might be worth doing as well. Having a few steel plates and things on board this as uh, repairs for while I'm out in case I do some damage when collecting something out and about. Oh, no, 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 He's terrifying, and I bet I'm going to have to go over some worse terrain than that little smooth slope. It's a steep slope, but it's still a smooth slope. The other nice thing about this is it gets the magnesium sorted and gets me on top of it when I'm probably going to be wanting to refine some cobalt as soon as I get back, assuming I find some. So, lots of reasons to do things this way. Oh, that is definitely getting lighter. I wish I could... I wish I could have, this is just a random aside, but I wish I could have this level of HUD and this level of HUD. None of this one with the tooltip. Because the tooltip, I don't, I don't want it. I just, I don't, I don't need it. I've been able to get rid of the rotation tooltips, I should be able to get rid of the tool tooltips. But, oh well. So if that's the case, and I don't really have much more room here, let's grab the gravel, let's do my thing. Let's throw it down the hill. Whee! Bye bye, gravel. Come on, keep rolling. Keep rolling. Go on, get! Get! Get out of here. Uh, maybe one more load of ice before morning. That's something I do have room for. Oh, come on, get back up that hill. I need to lock you in here so you don't slide. Load it. There we go. Alright, it's almost light enough to get out of here. So that'll be the last little mining trip for tonight. And then it is off resource hunting. And, you know, location scouting. Because I want a better home. Oh, hang on. How's my battery looking? Fully depleted in 12 hours. Alright, so after this trip, I suspect I'm going to be wanting to charge this because that battery is below 25%. But, maybe I should take note of how much power I've actually got at the moment. Before this trip and then after. So, before this trip, 240-ish kilowatt hours. It's okay. I'll just have to see how much I've got left when I come back. Yep. I'm going to start this journey right now. So, the direction I want to head in is up this hill and vaguely off this way toward the well in the gas giants direction a few people have asked why whether i'd considered doing a first person only playthrough and uh, i just i find that i get frustrated quite quickly with first person things in games where you have to control vehicles because the amount of awareness I have, the amount of spatial awareness I have right now is pretty mm, significantly reduced compared to what I would really have if I were in a vehicle like this. My field of view is quite narrow, I I just can't really get a good sense of, I can't get any sense of spatial awareness and having to constantly switch between cameras to look backwards just feels a bit like it'll get frustrating more than fun 
for me. Uh, I think it would add some interesting engineering challenges because you would have to have cameras everywhere and you'd have to make sure that you can see all the time with those cameras and everything that you need. But despite my usual obsession with anything that adds an engineering challenge, I don't think it would work great for me. And I think I'd feel like I was missing out on something for the video. Because being able to show you guys this this camera angle on this vehicle is something that I kind of like to do. I'm going to do my best to stick to the snow because it's smooth-ish. Even if it can get steep. But I don't think I've seen any of those horrible craggy bits in the snow. If I spot any boulders, I'm going to head for them. Check them out, but I don't see any right now. Okay, at times my battery is saying 55 minutes of power. That makes me uncomfortable. Hopefully as the sun peaks over... Is that the boulder? That's a boulder. Gotta go check that out. And that sun is almost over and going to be lighting everything up nicely for me, so I should be able to spot the boulders much more easily soon. Silicon, huh? Okay. Let's use a command that a few people have been reminding me of that I constantly forget about. So that's GPS SI. And I now have a GPS that says SI. So I don't have to go into the menu at all. I can just use a chat command, which I have been told numerous times and every time I would forget. So maybe this time it'll stick. And also, maybe it'll prevent me getting stuck in a menu while I slide down a hill and crash. Because those of you that have seen me drive before know that I have a bad habit of getting a bit overconfident, staying in a menu longer than I should, and ending up somewhere I shouldn't. It's funny that even a little vehicle like this, because of the Daily Needs mod, is a lot faster and a lot better at getting me around than walking. Like, because I can't sprint constantly at 10 meters a second. The fact that this can intermittently go up to 15 or sometimes maybe I could push 20, but I can do so tirelessly is, well, at least for another 50 minutes, <laughs> is much, much better. If I manage to miss an ore deposit, please tell me in the comments with the time code. So if you don't see me type in a GPS marker, uh, that means I missed it. And literally at this point in the game, any ore deposit is of interest to me. Doesn't matter what it is, literally anything could be of incredible value. And that looks bluish, it's magnesium, okay. It's not bad, but I was hoping for cobalt. Enter slash GPS space MG. My ore detector should be strong enough to pick up stuff that's underground if there's something underground, but the underground ores are quite sparse, so I don't like my chances of ending up just happening across one. What's this boulder got in it? Cobalt! Awesome! I'm going to collect a little bit of that. I'm also going to ditch the stone that I pick up with it. Might as well ditch the ice too. It's just I don't need to exit the, exit the thing. It's just extra weight that I don't need to carry. Because I can easily get plenty of that back at home. I'm also noticing that I did not fill up my oxygen bottles before I left. So I'm glad I put some on board. So I'm going to keep going forward and see if I can pick a location for my new base. I want to have a nice clear view of the gas giant. So that I can set up some nice big viewing windows. And yes, that's right. Despite having drones and things active in this save and many enemies that will come and hunt me down, I'm going to do everything I can to remain above ground. As I said in the finale for Survival Maybe, I spent enough time underground in that series to last me for a lifetime, and I don't want to do it again unless I really have to. I would like to do much more of my building this time above ground with windows and views and things like that despite the added challenge or in fact I suppose in some ways because of the added challenge when it comes to the drones and enemies I still found cobalt so I should be able to build everything I need in order to get a proper base going 
but I think at some point I'm going to need to build a large grid detector on a rover so that I can scout out more resources. So I have not spotted a single thing underground. Boulders, boulders, boulders! I do not see any boulders. I bet I will have missed some though. The curse of recording stuff is searching like this is that I'll probably notice stuff in the edit and you guys will probably notice stuff in the footage that I completely missed at the time. And I'll have no idea how to get back to them because I won't really know where things are. Nope, still no boulders. I'm starting to like the view a bit better, but I think I still want to... Oh, that's a boulder. Is it? Or is that just rough? I think that might just be rough. So I found two magnesium boulders, one cobalt, and one silicon. No iron, though. I wouldn't mind finding a little bit of a iron, even in a boulder. Just to try and up my production rate. Oh, almost missed that boulder. And it's iron. Hey, <laughs> cool. Cool, cool, cool. I'm not going to mine any of that now, but it'll be nice to know when I set up the new base, because I think we're almost in a location where I'd want to build it. Got the full view. Oops. I should probably look up there once I've parked rather than while I'm still driving. Uh, let's just go over this next little hill. All right, let's hop out. So, that's kind of a cool view. Got the gas giant up there. We can see the other moons around it. We've got, from here, we've got a nice wide view to the sunrise. We should have a nice beautiful view to the sunset. Hmm. Yeah, I think this could almost be the spot. Somewhere around here anyway. This is about what I was imagining when I set up this scenario, because I really, really wanted to have a spectacular view, since I already had the plan that I wanted to be building on the surface, not underground. I quite like this spot. It's fairly flat. It's a nice open expanse. I should, I'm kind of on top of a hill, but I've got nice, interesting mountains all around. I am going to make this slash GPS future home. Now I'm going to return and hopefully I spot a whole bunch more boulders going backwards. Oh, I see three. Maybe four up on that hill. Or at least, oh no, one of them's a bush. Dang it. <laughs> it's so hard to tell in the snow. Those alien bushes, the big ones, look ridiculously like boulders at certain detail levels. Yep. There's nothing there. Excited over nothing. One of the things about where I'm picking to settle down is that I would want it to be in an area where it's easy to move around with wheeled vehicles. I, as much as I would like to build up on one of those little snowy plateaus over there, just because it looks kind of cool. Oh, whoops. Um, it would also make it very, very difficult to get in and out of the base, which is obviously not desirable. When I set up this scenario, I very much expected that I would be living off boulder-based materials for a time, which is something that I sort of wanted. I liked the idea of having to deal with Collect, going around and collecting resources that way. There are underground ore veins though. At least there were when I tested it with a modded detector. They're not particularly deep, they're just very rare. So the chances of finding them is fairly low. Which feeds into the modular encounter spawner and the Assertive Installations mod. Because the way that bases get spawned with the Modular Encounter Spawner is that distance travelled over the surface 
is that after a certain distance travel over the surface, you will trigger a spawn of a base. If, in the case of a set of installations, your threat level is high enough. So I'm hoping my threat level isn't right now, because otherwise I could be well setting myself up for a disaster while I go out and hunt for these ores. But it was one of the reasons I wanted to not build up too much more stuff before I went out and about. And those two things up on the hill there look promising for boulders. So I think the only thing I need to still find... In fact is... Oh, is whether there's any silver. But I don't think I'm going to find any silver in boulders. I think I'll only find it underground. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit more cobalt from that first cobalt boulder that's somewhere here, that way. And then I'm going to head on home. And start prepping for departure. So that's going to be figuring out how I'm going to get the survival kit out of the survival pod without wasting too much. And getting it onto a grid that has power. Ah, uh, yes. I know what I should be doing before I go and try and think about the survival kit. I need to... I do need to figure out how I'm going to charge this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that came out of nowhere. Oh, man. That was close. That was way, way too close to me just going straight over that cliff. No. No, no, no. Bad, 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 bad. Oh, that's rough, but I think we should be okay. Okay, good. I am slightly too heavy to have good control anymore. So slowing down is challenging at times. No, no, bad wrong. Oh. I am going to be so happy to get away from that cliff. Because if I ever lose control of this vehicle, it is just going to go the whole way down. There is going to be no stopping it. And it has come close a couple of times. Let's get our cobalt out. Sounds like all of the magnesium got processed while we were gone, which is fantastic. 28.7 magnesium from all that ore. That's like... I think the 25 mil containers use... Do they use 0.3 or do they use 3? Maybe it's 0.3. Yeah, it'd be 0.3, because it's 0.05. No, that's not as bad. I was thinking if it used 3 magnesium per, then yes, yeah, not going to get many of them out of that. We have cobalt now, which means we can make metal grids. And a bunch of other things like... Ooh. Ooh. I could make myself a slightly better drill and grinder and welder. Hear me. Probably not that useful just yet, though. Alright. What's going to be the best way to do this? I think... If I make a few interior plate, then what I'm thinking is... The rotor part stuck on the back of the battery, I should be able to hook up to this rotor if I get the blocks at the correct height. But I don't know what the correct height is. It might work if I do this. Oh, I don't have catwalks. What do I need for catwalks? I need to build an interior wall first. Right, great. <sighs> I guess it has to be done. Okay. Now with that done, I can lose it from my bar and I can make the catwalks. Because what I want to do is hopefully build a platform without having to get rid of that light that's there. If I have to, I have to, but... If I can do this instead and build a platform that way, it should work a little bit better and hopefully will get me to the height I need to be at. I should be able, then once I get back here, I'll be able to tell how high I need to set the rotor part on the back of the battery to be able to hook it up. And it looks like it'll need to be on the bottom of it. Though I'm not even convinced that's going to be low enough. Okay. I'm really, really hopeful this doesn't all explode. Because it might. It might not be happy about this. Hmm. 
Uh, this is what I was afraid of with this sort of setup. I'm not gonna be able to get this thing stable enough to attach reliably. I'd need to have the attach on the other end. Oh, I got it attached! Heck yeah! Battery! Fully depleted in 12 hours. Well, the uh, refinery should finish before then, right? Maybe? So I've got the parking spot and the attachment, that's fine. The reason I didn't want to put the rotor on the vehicle and then the rotor part on here is for later on. If I'm going to use this method for attachment, I don't want to have something that's going to constantly rename the base. I'm fine with the little miner getting renamed every time, but if the base gets renamed every time, that will get annoying very, very quickly. I'm slightly freaked out that when this releases from the rotor, it's going to spring up in the air. So what I should probably do is create a wheels group. Goofy wheels, because I'm just going to go with Goofy for the moment. Then groups, increase strength and decrease strength, where is it? And now it should have no power with which to launch itself up in the air when I detach it from that rotor. The final question I have for myself now is do I go through the expense of building another wind turbine just so that I can charge this battery before we move? The other thing is if I want to do that I probably want to get this one fully charged as well and use this as the basis for my next vehicle. So I've already built the battery. I think I will build another turbine. I feel like it is a warranted use of material. That'll do. This is the early tower. It doesn't need to be pretty. My future buildings will all be focused on being pretty and making sure that I'm not building horrible armor scaffolding like this. But for now, I think I can justify it from a it'll take me too long point of view. I wonder how much less power I'll get out of this one because it's not quite as high as the others. Hmm, another, that's 20 kilowatts less. But is that enough that the batteries are now... Yes, they're charging, okay. Because we were 240 kilowatt hours in that battery before I left and I used up almost 80 kilowatt hours just driving around for the day. So once the refinery is done with the cobalt, the recharge, recharge rate should go up dramatically, maybe. I think I might have a bit of waiting on my hands. And I see those two empty O2 bottles, and I see my O2 at 11, 9, 8, 6, 4, 3. <laughs> I think I was relatively productive so far today, so I'm actually going to take a break here. Next time, I hope to start building the new vehicle to take me over to the new base home. And that's going to involve some method of getting the survival kit out of this thing. Uh, which might involve pistons and rotors because I cannot think of a way to get anything in here. Though I'm probably also whoops, going to have to mine out a bit of an entryway so I can get a vehicle in here. I don't really want to turn this thing into a vehicle. It's sort of horribly hodgepodge and terribly arranged. So I may just waste the resources from it and transfer a number of these blocks through the wasteful way rather than the grind the block off and, you know, transfer it. Because at the moment I don't really have the facilities to be able to do it any, different, any other way. The only block that I really, really have to do with a crane or some other method is the survival kit. Everything else here I can remake but I cannot find any silver yet. So there is no way for me to make the medical components that will get destroyed if I ground this down and moved it. So I think I will just focus on stripping this for parts and taking off this armor and things so that I have a bit of a clearer space to work from. Possibly cutting this down to be just the survival kit the cargo container and the O2 tank initially and then working from there and attaching it to 
some sort of towing vehicle to get it out of here. Maybe I could even pop a couple of wheels on the hydrogen engine so that it really could be towed out of here. <laughs> so I'm going to have to figure that one out before next time. So there's all that and plenty more to come. And I will see you guys then. Along with little Mr. Red, Goofy, Dippy, Bird, Emu, Ostrich, Kiwi. All the names that you guys came up with last time that I still haven't decided upon. So much more to come. And I'm excited. I am having too much fun with this playthrough. I keep not being able to stop myself.